Argentina just won the FIFA World Cup, and then this happened. Four million fans from all over the world flock to Buenos Aires to celebrate their favorite team winning it all on the world's biggest stage. So why do we get so worked up about a bunch of people running around chasing a ball? We know sports are more than just a game, and they're not just a way to kill time between commercials during the Super Bowl either. They're a way for us to explore our own capabilities, bond with each other, and find real meaning in our lives. In this video, we'll delve into the deep and complex reasons that people love sports, exploring the history of athletics, the role of narrative in sports, and the emotional and social connections that sports provide. Sports have a long and fascinating history that dates back to ancient civilizations. In ancient Greece, for example, athletics were an important part of both physical education and cultural life. The Olympic Games, which were held every four years in honor of the Greek god Zeus, featured a variety of athletic events, such as running, jumping, and throwing stuff. The ancient Romans also had a strong tradition of sports and athletics, with events such as gladiator combat, chariot racing, and wrestling being popular forms of entertainment. In addition to providing a way for people to test their physical skills, sports in ancient Rome were also used as a way to unite people and promote social cohesion. Sports can also be seen as a way for individuals to explore and understand their own capabilities and limitations. By competing against others, we're able to see what we're capable of and where we need to improve. This process of self-discovery and self-improvement is a key aspect of many philosophical traditions, including the ancient Greek concept of arete, or excellence. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing some of these Greek words wrong, though. Another philosophical concept that is closely related to the love of sports is the idea of agon, or competition. In ancient Greek thought, agon was seen as a necessary and even virtuous part of human life, as it allowed individuals to test their abilities and strive for excellence. This concept of Aegon has been central to many sports throughout history, with the Olympic Games being a particularly famous example. Narrative is another important aspect of sports. Whether it's individual or team rivalries, personal moments of overcoming adversity, or even social tension in international play, these stories help to create an emotional connection to the sport and make it more meaningful for us, the fans. In the NBA, for example, the GOAT debate between LeBron James and Michael Jordan has been a key part of the narrative in recent years, adding an extra layer of excitement and drama to the game. With every new milestone LeBron accomplishes, the more difficult this debate becomes. People like Skip Bayless have made a whole career off this one topic, and the conversation is just as relevant now as it was a decade ago when LeBron won his first title. In the NFL, the New England Patriots' run of dominance in the 2000s led by quarterback Tom Brady created a powerful team narrative that captured the imagination and equally earned the hatred of fans around the country. NFL fans everywhere rejoiced when Brady left New England just to lose to him again with his new team in Tampa Bay. The personal drama of Brady's home life and pre-retirement has also played a role in the intrigue during the 2022 season. Bringing it back to ancient Greece, like traditional myths, sports often contain elements of storytelling, symbolism, and cultural significance. They often revolve around larger-than-life figures, both literally and figuratively, such as iconic athletes or legendary teams who become symbols of their communities or their countries. These figures can become symbols of hope, inspiration, or even national pride, depending on the context. An example of this comes from the late great Bill Russell, the greatest champion in NBA history. Not only was he a pioneer of the game, he also overcame adversity both on and off the court. From his exciting matchups against Wilt Chamberlain to his role in the civil rights movement, Russell's story will live on to inspire the hearts and minds of generations to come. Sports can also serve as a way to bring people together and create a sense of community. Like traditional myths, sports can provide a shared experience that helps to bond people together and create a sense of belonging. This can be especially true in times of conflict or crisis, when sports can provide a temporary relief from the challenges of everyday life and help to unite people around a single common cause. They can provide a sense of escapism and often an alternative reality for people to get lost in. Sometimes the most compelling narratives are the ones that involve the scrappy underdogs who come out on top against all the odds. Remember the movie Rocky? That's the type of stuff legends are made of. And it's not just the movies, because sports are full of real-life examples of underdogs who rise to the occasion and defy everyone's expectations. These David vs. Goliath storylines are impossible to ignore, and even fans of opposing teams can appreciate a Cinderella run when they see one. In the 2018 World Cup, for example, the Croatian national team shocked the world by making it all the way to the final, despite being considered a long shot by most. 
These types of stories are what make sports so exciting and compelling. They remind us that anything is possible and that it's not always the most talented team that comes out on top. It is this balance between skill, heart, and a little bit of luck that keeps us coming back for more. In team sports, the narrative often centers around the team as a whole and the journey it takes throughout the year. For example, in the NBA, we follow the ups and downs of our teams as they battle through the gauntlet of the 82-game regular season. Or in the NFL, we hold our breath during the single elimination playoffs. With shows like Hard Knocks, we can even get a greater look into the inner workings of a team, from the hours of work they put into their craft to the dynamics in the locker room. Things get especially spicy when a team has to overcome some type of adversity, such as an injury to a star player or internal drama between the players. These team narratives can create a sense of emotional investment and make the outcome of each game feel so much more significant. But in individual sports, the narrative can often center around individual rivalries or storylines. In the UFC, for example, the rivalry between Conor McGregor and Khabib was a key part of the narrative leading up to their highly anticipated fight in 2018. These types of rivalries can create a sense of excitement and anticipation for the fans as we await the moment when our favorite fighter will finally get the chance to prove themselves against their toughest opponent. The raw physicality of combat sports mixed with the pre-fight culture of trash talk and stare downs creates a hostile, intense environment where both athletes really want to hurt each other. The way we consume sports matters too. There is a distinction, for example, between fans who root for the underdog and those who bandwagon the clear favorite. Fans who root for the underdog are often more loyal and feel a stronger connection to their team, as they may see themselves as being a part of the team's story by supporting them through thick and thin. These fans might be motivated by the desire to see the little guy come out on top, especially if their team has struggled for many years. It's always a delight to see a team break a decade-long drought of making the playoffs or winning a championship. Bandwagon fans, on the other hand, may be less loyal and have a more superficial connection to the team. These fans may be motivated by the desire to be associated with a winning team, or they may simply enjoy watching a team dominate their competition. Because let's be real, sometimes it's hard to resist the allure of a truly great team. Who doesn't love watching the Golden State Warriors execute their beautiful brand of basketball, or the Kansas City Chiefs dismantle their opponents? It's hard to deny the appeal of watching a team at the top of their game, and sometimes it's just fun to cheer for the clear favorite. When people become fans of the game, they can put aside their team allegiances and appreciate the greatness in full display in front of them. But back to Argentina. Why do people get so rowdy, especially when their team wins? Well, mob mentality can play a role in fan behavior. This refers to the tendency for people to conform to the actions and behaviors of a group rather than thinking and acting independently for themselves. This can lead to an increase in aggressive behavior as individuals may feel more emboldened to act in ways they might not normally do if they were alone. There's a few reasons why this can happen. The first is emotional arousal. When people are emotionally invested in the outcome of a game, they may feel a strong sense of excitement and arousal. This can lead to an increase in uncivil behavior as people may feel more energized and less inhibited. The second is group dynamics. The presence of other people can also affect your behavior. When people are in a group, they may feel a sense of anonymity and a reduced sense of personal responsibility. This can lead to an increase in aggressive or rowdy behavior as people may feel more comfortable acting out because they believe that they are less likely to be held accountable for their own actions. The third is peer pressure. We all have a desire to fit in and be accepted by the group, and this can lead to an increase in this type of behavior. People may feel the pressure to conform to the behavior of a group, even if they don't personally agree with it. A great example of this was fans of the Buffalo Bills throwing snowballs at the Miami Dolphins in the middle of a game. It's hard to believe that the average New Yorker would pelt Tyree Kill in the face with a ball of ice if they saw him in the street, but suddenly they feel free to do so in the middle of a game. When the Dolphins were awarded with a 15-yard penalty, the fans responded by, you guessed it, throwing more snowballs at the referees. As we've explored in this video, the love of sports is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon that has deep roots in human history and philosophy. It's not just about the score or the physical challenge, it's about the journey, the narrative, and the connections that sports provide. For me, sports has always been a way to connect with others, test my own limits, and find meaning in my life. Whether it's cheering on my favorite team, joining in a pickup game with my buddies, or talking to you guys on this channel, there's always been something about sports that touches something deep within me. But at the same time, I recognize that sports can be a source of conflict and division. The passionate rivalries between teams and players can sometimes spill over into unhealthy behavior in the real world, and the intense pressure to win can also lead to cheating and other ethical issues, which I want to explore in a future video. That's why it's so important for us to remember the true value of sports, respect, integrity, and fair play.
Whether we're watching from the stands or competing on the field, we have a responsibility to uphold these values and enjoy the game in a responsible and respectful way. So as we reflect on our love for sports, let's remember to embrace the positive aspects of this pastime while also being mindful of our potential pitfalls. Whether we're fans or players, we can all contribute to a healthy and positive sports culture. Thank you all for watching.